As the gaming industry and the anticipation for the full summer timeline of gaming news waits to pour in, the talk of the advantages between the Xbox Series X and the PS5 grows. We've seen the spec sheets, the details have been broken down, and on Xbox's side, many games have already been teased, revealed, and gameplay shown. The power delta for the Xbox Series X is large in some places and interchangeable in others compared to the PS5. But there is one thing that the PS5 has the clear advantage. But that leading edge may be null and void in practice on many majority of games. One platform could be the surprising thing holding back the true advancement of next generation. This is Colt Eastwood, thank you for checking out this video and the channel. We are going to break down some information that has come to light about the PS5 and Xbox Series X thanks to a couple of large channels. I'll have sources linked in the description if you want to check them out afterwards. For now, if you like this video, scroll down, hit the like and subscribe to the channel and let's talk about the last mystery remaining for the PS5 and Xbox Series X. The specs on the Xbox Series X and the PS5 have been paraded and stacked up in many comparisons over the past few months and it's clear that in simple terms the Xbox has a much more powerful and capable graphics engine, a slightly faster processor, and the PS5 leads with raw, efficient, super fast input and output in the storage bandwidth department. Most fans of the PlayStation platform, developers included, have lauded the PS5, SSD, and Kraken architecture as the best and most easy console to develop for of all time. The PS5 clearly has sacrificed raw power by relying on variable clocks, frequencies, and power draw to put more effort into input and output pipeline with 5.5 gigabytes SSD that can be compressed to work with up to 9 gigabytes of speed which is really more than any other console or consumer desktop PC can summon because of the highly customized hardware configuration and software working together in the PS5. Traditionally, games relied on recalling bits of data or, more practically, parts of the game world, visual assets and objects by searching a hard disk, a 54 RPM drive scattered throughout the disk as quickly as possible to make a seamless world a reality in-game. On a hard drive, this is about 100 megabits per second. Now on paper, looking at the raw bandwidth speeds, the Xbox Series X's SSD can do that 50 times faster, and the PS5 can do it 100 times faster, twice as fast as the Xbox. But the SSD is only as fast as the cache and storage pipeline to the CPU and GPU, which in the case of the two new consoles is tied directly on the board. In other words, PlayStation and Xbox have taken great care to remove any major bottlenecks from the new consoles. It's important to understand the role of the storage and I.O. that the SSD is responsible for in the presentation, performance, and scope of games we will play on the new Xbox and PS5. The CPU handles the workload of input and output operations, game enemy and team AI, physics simulations, and many other things that bring the game world and its characters to life. Here, the Xbox Series X has the advantage with 8 to 10% more processing speed than the PS5 depending on its variable frequency. The GPU or graphics engine is responsible for the visuals, modeling, lighting effects, textures, and all of the visual qualities that can make a game feel realistic or hard hitting on the eyes and in the control of the player. Resolution and frame rate are largely handled by the GPU and the Xbox Series X has the clear advantage some 16% with more compute units even at slightly lower clock rate than the PS5 with two thirds of the units of the Xbox. We already know these numbers in the two consoles, but it's important to illustrate what these advantages will do for the actual games we'll be playing. The SSD and the Kraken software that is impressing developers and gaming industry critics is not responsible for the wholesale next generation leap of how games can be developed for three main reasons. Number one, the super fast throughput of the PS5 affects game design made specifically for the new hardware. Game designers can get games to load much faster than the competition. We are talking 2-3 to three seconds over the 5-6 to six seconds it would take on the Xbox Series X. Every second counts, but there is much more to Kraken and the PS5 SSD than just loading times. 
The game can run so quickly under the hood that as fast as a player can spin the camera around or fly through the world. The assets, textures and polygons can be populated in the game world so fast that you'll likely never see pop in or need to trick the viewer into missing the transition. All of this is behind the curtain magic that developers have mastered for decades. This would be an incredible advantage for the PS5 over the Xbox Series X if it did not have an SSD and relied on physical hard disk storage. It does not. The new Xbox has half the speed of the PS5 in line with super fast, powerful PC builds of today. But with Xbox Velocity Architecture, Xbox's own cracking competitor, to speed up throughput, it is rumored that the Xbox Series X can recall an instant 100 gigabytes from the RAM pool, meaning that nearly the entire game can be cached in the instant memory ready to recall in a microsecond. This puts the super fast SSD in the PS5 in a position of direct competition with the more powerful Xbox Series X to allow developers to get the game world alive immediately on both consoles with little to no restrictions or bottlenecks. PS5's first party exclusives with their own game engines will make the groundbreaking miracles of behind the curtain asset streaming. That's if you compare it to the Xbox's biggest exclusives, the Edge goes to Kraken and the PS5. Horizon Zero Dawn 2 is highly rumored to launch in the first year for the PS5 and it's very likely that Guerrilla Games has fully leveraged the raw quick throughput of the PS5 and will deliver a vibrant open world that will be devoid of loading screens and long fast travel waiting times. While the Xbox will launch with Halo Infinite in the first year, that is being designed with PS5's next hindrance that will keep the investment in the SSD held back on the PS5. Yes, Multiplats, the biggest and most popular games made by the world's biggest names in game design, will be making games for the PS5, Xbox Series X, and PC. Some games, especially in the first year, will be releasing on the 2010s era PS4 and Xbox One. But let's take a look at something like Call of Duty in 2021, only releasing on the new consoles and PC. The holdback would be Xbox Series X, with its SSD half the speed of the PS5. So the world design would have to be scaled back for delivery on 2.4 gigabytes per second instead of the full 5.5 in the PS5. But that's not the holdback. It's not the Xbox Series X. It's actually the PC. For the first time in years, the PC will be the lowest common denominator. The mass majority of PCs in minimum specs are running games installed on a 5400 RPM or 7200 RPM hard drive. SSDs have been in mainstream desktop gaming PCs for years, but developers have had to scale back game design for hard drives which make up a large portion of their possible game sales. Game design is one thing that cannot be scaled back, otherwise medium build PCs would suffer devastating pop-in and wait times inside of games. In two or more years we may see hard drives drop off of minimum spec PCs, just as PS5 and Xbox Series X have decided to remove that barrier for next generation games. The SSD does not make a game look better, perform higher frame rates, or make the world feel more immersive. Much of that is actually on the developer to create a beautiful, breathtaking world that draws the player in with visuals, realism, response, and great gameplay. Many of those things that make a game amazing are handled by the CPU, the RAM, and the GPU. And we've seen far more done with far less, even on hard drives 100 times slower than the promise we may see from the Xbox Series X and the PS5. Sony's vision of a world that moves quickly and seamlessly is definitely a reality to come, and the Xbox Series X is right there with the hardware, software, and tools to let developers and the people that play their games feel the magic of next generation consoles. This is Colt Eastwood. Thank you so much for watching. This was one of the hardest videos I've made in a long time. I have a cursory understanding of the tech and software that powers these new consoles, but I do understand one thing. I have talked to the people that work on the hardware, and I've talked to the people that will build these incredible games that we are going to see, and we will feel a massive leap for next generation. Check out my last video that covers why I think we'll see 60 FPS and even 100 FPS on most every game on the new consoles. For those of you that stuck around this long, thank you so much for your support. Write in the comments, Epiphone.
Holy smokes, I'm at almost 100,000 subscribers, and just three years ago I was at about 1,000. I'm so grateful for all of you that watch what I make on this channel. I really feel like I'm becoming a small part of the community, and thank you so much for your support. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting the like and subscribe to the channel. For those that want to stick around, hit the bell to be notified of new content each week, and join the channel or Patreon for early access to videos. Those supporters saw this one about 12 hours early. Oh, and I also do monthly giveaways because I love ya. Add me on Twitter and Xbox Live at Colt Eastwood if you want to message me. I check those messages and respond to as many as I can. Please be safe at home. Build a ton of compassion for all the humans around you. And please treat others in the comment section and in the real world with respect. And as always, please be nice.